I see it in my everyday. When you turn off the TV and you talk to regular people and they're going around, like, people are awesome. Like, people are awesome everywhere. Like every kind of person is really cool. And like, you know, like sometimes they get bad moods, the humans, you know, they get really bad moods sometimes. But you can shake them out of the bad mood so fast. And that's one of the reasons I stay so stoked. Everybody kind of just needs a little bit of love and attention. I think most people just need to be told that they're important and that their lives matter and shit, you know. I encourage everyone, if you don't have a real friend, become a real friend to somebody and they'll never let you go. So here we are. We got Eric Jesus Combs. Man, so glad to have you here. So for everyone out there listening, Jesus played with some of the biggest names in the game, including Britney Spears, Mariah Carey, Snoop Dogg, Janet Jackson, Kanye West, Eminem, J-Lo. The list goes on. Plays bass for the badass funk band Lettuce. He's an amazing human being, complete musical badass. Jesus, how are you, man? How's it going? I'm doing great. I'm just so thankful. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful day. It's to be um, sound checking with lettuce. We're playing it like a, it looks like a circus tent. So it's called the Big Top here in Missouri, in St. Louis. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool looking. You know, like I'm at, I feel like I'm in the circus, traveling circus. My first question for you, Jesus. Can you share with me what you've learned over your career about what's involved with being a great leader? Yeah, totally. You got to check in on your people and you got to be good to people. You know, you really just got to be good to people and check in and make sure that they're doing okay. (laughs) You know, communication, I think, is the most important thing. It's also one of the more difficult things in this world is communicating. And um, it's important to kind of use simple communication and talk to your friends and just, you know, like just check it in, you know, camaraderie. There's a lot of things to it, but being kind and gentle and humble and strong, you know, strong, you can do a lot by being strong and just being, you know, yourself and unashamed to be yourself. And, you know, when you feel like you're doing the right thing or you're pretty sure you're doing the right thing, it's kind of as good as you can get these days. But when you're pretty sure you're doing the right thing, you just be confident in that. And, um, you know, get, get check in with your friends and make sure you're doing the right thing too, you know, and be, mm-hmm. be accountable and hold people accountable, you know, and be able to be held accountable, be able to admit when you're wrong. You know, admitting when you're wrong is really important. You know, say, hey, Amen. you know how I just said this a second ago? I just realized that that was incorrect and I, I stand corrected and I am, you know, just to be fallible and be real and then be, but be there and be consistent and loyal. That's what I was thinking about. Can you, can you talk to me about, about what kinds of things inspire you outside of music? Sure. A lot of nature um, inspires me, you know, birds flying around, stuff like that. But people are, I love a lot of art and I'm really a visual arts person too. And so many kinds of art. I love poetry. I love reading, um, yoga, taking care of myself, getting exercise. Um, but, you know, good people, really cool people inspire me. I'm so inspired by so many different people. And Yeah, Quincy Jones, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I don't try to watch too many documentaries these days. There's a lot of documentaries and I find that Well, I'll watch documentaries, but as soon as they bring in the sad strings, I turn them off immediately. That's that's just advice I have. If you're going to watch a documentary, cool. But when you hear the sad strings halfway through, just shut that thing down. Go out there. Live life. Because they show these documentaries and they'll show you like the greatest, most inspiring thing of all time for the first 30 minutes. And then that's the part I watch. And then I turn it off. (laughs) You know, like, because then they'll take you down a rabbit hole of truth, what really happened to the guy. You know, because the guy went down the, the dark path, usually, you know, so like I shut those things down and I try to, yeah, I try to stay focused on the positive. I read like, you know, I read some books, but, you know, I do a lot of praying. So I'm staying in touch, try to stay in touch with the creator and the most high and the highest vibration, highest frequency I can get going around myself every day. For so sure. Culinary arts, you know, all the arts, culinary arts are really inspiring. We had a really, really beautiful meal last night. That was just, it was just as much a piece of art as any music. It was amazing. So I love all the arts, but um, nature is really inspiring. I go to the beach a lot, ocean, and, you know, I love all aquatic life. I'm a big aquatic life person, and birds are cool. I really like birds, and I don't know. Ocean's really my kind of my thing. 
I always come back to this, like, there's so many musicians with incredible chops, but my favorite thing about my favorite musicians is their taste. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like a DJ who's selecting really good songs for each moment, you know? It's like we have these moments on life on planet Earth, and there's a right kind of thing and vibe for each one of your moments on the Earth, on your life, you know? So to find that, yeah, that's kind of one of the things I like to play the right bass line for the right moment, you know? Hey, so what do you think it is about an incredible pocket that can have such a powerful effect on the listener and on the musicians playing? I think it's hearing um, people come together and people... Like, okay, so I went to a Jacob Collier concert the other day, and I lost it. It was so amazing. I totally cried. It was phenomenal. But it, it, I had this really deep thought right then in the moment when, so like, you know how, if you ever walk into a room, like a restaurant or whatever, and there's a million different conversations happening, and it's kind of this cacophonous noise, you know, or these sounds, it's kind of like you hear all these conversations at once, but you don't really hear any words. You're just hearing all this rumble of talking right so i heard that in the room and then jacob asked us all to sing a note you know he had like a c e g thing kind of going and he had the the room separated to c e g whatever the chord was something i think that's what it was i'm not exactly sure but he had us all sing three notes and the whole room within like 10 seconds the whole room was singing in harmony together so it was like a couple hundred people maybe a couple thousand people and it just made me think about life and how the whole thing could be so much more harmonious and how we could I mean the subject really like it breaks me up just thinking about it but that moment like showed me that like very easily and effortlessly the world could live in harmony so I think when you hear that pocket what you're hearing is people just really as one you're hearing you know a couple people really sound like they're one thing and I think that's really inspiring to humans because i feel like we could all be doing something together you know i feel like the earth could be one living being that really functions in more harmony than it does presently very easily is the thing i see that it could happen with very little effort if we all just kind of immediately decided to live in love you know so i think that's what the pocket is (laughs) to me do you ever think about what's happening at like a spiritual, like a cellular level that leads to such this powerfully healing thing for people with music? Yeah, I tried to, I try to think about those things as much as I can. You know what I mean? Honestly. Yeah, totally. That's what I want to be focused on more of the time. But yeah, just, you know, like planet gives off a frequency. Our planet gives off frequency and the moon gives off frequency and tones, you know, so there's tones that are naturally coming off of our earth and off of all the planets and then just, it's one of the most natural things there is, is a vibration of sound. So, yeah, I think about how that is affecting. Like, have you ever seen when you they blast uh, sound waves onto a plate of glass with sand on it and the sand reacts a certain way mm-hmm. and really like forms beautiful images and things like that? So yeah. I think that's got to be happening within our bodies as you're hearing these musics. I, I really think that that's got to be happening in on a cellular level within us, you know? So I think it has a power to... Yeah, to reprogram our DNA, probably. <laughs> you know, yeah, I think so. It feels really good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Definitely look at when they do, when they blast frequencies onto water, too. That gets really intense. Frozen water as well. Yes, Emoto, Masuro Emoto. Emo- yeah, that guy, he's the greatest. Yes. I, mean, I probably shouldn't get in trouble and talk about liquid death, but I just can't stand that water because it says the word death on the side of it. Well, well Bad whatever. vibes. They're giving us free water. I'll drink it. But yeah, I mean, come on, marketing. Can we think of something else? And it's really beautifully <laughs> done. The art, the art on the side of the can is really beautiful and everybody's all into it. But I just like, I'm not going to drink that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> come on. Yeah, they got to check out the Matsumoto. And you know, it's all probably just a little bit of they didn't see that. They didn't see that one. And and I think what's going on in our earth right now is we all have pieces of information, lots of different pieces of information. Like I could be storing a a good amount of the truth in my head, but there's probably a grip that I don't know. And I think we all have like a lot of pieces of this puzzle going like I'm seeing a lot of people doing breath work and I'm hearing a lot about breath work coming around and a lot about, you know, being hydrated, really well hydrated. And it's just like mankind is, 
we're going to put it together. I feel like we're going to put it together, hopefully, and like live in harmony. But yeah, I, I, I do think about the cellular level of music a lot. I want to, I want to touch on that, that point you were just bringing up, man. Like, yeah. Life can feel like we turn on the news and there's so much bad energy. There's so much uh, like evil in the world. And you are someone I, I'm so inspired by your optimism and how, how deeply ingrained your, your feeling of purpose is with what you're doing. Like, can you talk to me at all about how you keep that purpose and that optimism, even when things are like just looking so gray? One of the things you got to do is turn the TV off as soon as possible and get as far away from the screen as you can. But I appreciate you. I just say thank you for noticing. And I try, I try when I wake up to not turn my phone on too early. You know what I mean? And like do some prayer and meditation and like, you got, you know, when you, I don't know, I try to humble myself in the sight of the most high. And then you realize, wait, there's a most high. Okay. Okay. If there's a most high, I'm uh, paying attention or at least somewhat cognizant of any of this. And I think that the good guy's going to win. And, you know, and that's all relative too, but I just have, I don't know. I think that I see it in my everyday. When you turn off the TV and you talk to regular people and they're going around, like, people are awesome. Like, people are awesome everywhere. Like every kind of person is really cool. And like, you know, like sometimes they get bad moods, the humans, you know, they get really bad moods sometimes. But you can shake them out of the bad mood so fast. And that's one of the reasons I stay so stoked is because you can smack somebody right out of a bad mood. Not, not I mean, metaphorically, you know, you can just talk somebody. Everybody kind of just needs a little bit of love and attention. I think most people just need to be told that they're important and that, that their lives matter and shit, you know. You can pull people out of like a really bad space pretty quickly and bring them around to being stoked again pretty quickly. So that makes me inspired a lot. And you you have a way with that specifically, mu- musically speaking. I want to I want to add take a moment to ask you like together the band does it together like together. it's so effortlessly when lettuce when Schmeens and Zoidis and Deitch and I and Bloom and Nigel just start playing. It's just so effortless. It just brings people so up and elevate their spirits. And it kind of like without thinking, you could take your mind right out of it and dance and just enjoy life for a second. And together we do that so effortlessly. And it's really cool. We take care of each other and look out for each other too. So yeah, that's the key. You know what I mean? Like humans, humans have the greatest potential ever. Can you talk to me about some of the specific things you admire about the other guys in Lettuce? Yeah, for sure. Loyalty is one of them. Uh, how about Adam Schmernoff? I'll talk about Schmeens for a second. He's amazing. And his, just the way he plays guitar is one of the things you can see is dedication to the craft. And you can see it's a consistency. It's this thing that, you know, a lot of guitar players, I just know from being a guitar player myself, is a lot of guitar players will start playing a groove and they'll hang on to it for about eight to maybe 12 bars, and then they'll drop it, and they'll still start, start taking solos and screwing around on the guitar. But Schmeens, because he realizes the drums and bass and the guitar, and we're all one and we're all equal, is that he just keeps crushing the part, and we all play parts together that are so nice. So Schmeens just has an amazing way of, you know, bringing this groove to be contagiously mesmerizing by playing playing a little role we try to build something bigger as a unit as we each play our simple part it all of a sudden becomes this very complex thing that's way over every all of our heads and, and it's cool yeah so yeah everybody in the band brings a really cool unique thing to it but a lot of loyalty everyone's very loyal um zoidis just plays from the heart all the time he brings down some magic energy from the outer, outer space i think there's so much going on in the improv sections when we are all playing together we're improv improvising and Zoidis will just start bringing down these melodies and these patterns out of heaven that are out of the skies where no. And I just talked to him about it the other day. I said, are you like fully trying, are you fully present conscious trying to make each thing? Cause I'm, I'm telling him because on my base, I'll try to do something and it'll do something totally else. But, you know, so like um, in these improvising moments, he, he says, yeah, I'm kind of in the zone most of the time that it's just, you know, stuff's just happening up there. So, you, you, you know, it's like about being in the zone. I think these guys get so deep. We all get so deep in this other state, but we allow ourselves to be really free and open and, and try to be as, as receptive to where the music wants to take us as we can, you know. And then Dice just lays down the greatest pocket of all time. 
Deitch's beats are just like so desirable. <laughs> yeah, he's just the most magnificent drummer. I love the way he plays the drums, you know. It make, brings these beats that just make us all happy, and you can really find your spot in that beat. As soon as he starts playing it, the whole room starts moving. And yeah, everybody everybody in the band is really awesome. Nigel just brings this peaceful spirit of, of uh, soul and funk and just the eras. You feel like he's from another era you know like he just brings this 70s incredible like but peaceful like i get this peaceful vibe from nigel he's just you met, you look over at nigel he's smiling and playing the coolest thing ever and he's so stoked on what you're playing and he brings peace to my heart you know but yeah everybody's just special and, and beautiful and like benny bloom is always looking out for everyone in the band making sure everybody's on the same page and that we're all aware of what's going on like and that's just like day to day too he's always trying to look out for everybody on the road and make sure everybody knows what's going on. But on stage, the same way, you look at him, he's like, he's going to let me know, oh, hey, Bridge is coming up pretty soon, geez. So I look back at Benny Bloom. I'm like, okay, I think this solo's coming to an end. I think we're going to go to the bridge. Because it's all freestyle. We don't know exactly when. So we got to look at each other. And communication, I'd say, is really is really key. And i say we're all, every, all the guys in the band are pretty great about communicating and letting each other know what they're thinking and and getting expressed and heard their expressions too so everybody's a really great listener and really respectful on and off stage so that's just my perspective you know man i i love that and you can definitely feel like you you say loyalty like you can feel how you guys are just a unit you know from the crowd yeah yeah i mean it's really true you, you know i was just telling shmeans the other day went to music college, was all homesick, found friends, and 30 years later, here we are in the tour bus. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> whoa, what the heck just happened? You know, like, that's what having a real friend really means. And I, you know, I encourage everyone, if you don't have a real friend, become a real friend to somebody, and they'll never let you go. So mm. this, there's a Bobby McFerrin song called Friends. There's a Bobby McFerrin song called Friends that I really love on bang zoom his album bang zoom and it says it says that and it says if you don't have a friend be one so that's pretty cool i like that yeah bobby's the greatest jesus can you talk to me about how you think mindfulness and meditation has helped you become a better musician well mindfulness and meditation to me are kind of i guess they're the same thing aren't they i never thought about that (laughs) um well, you need to be relaxed. I think to do art, you really need to be relaxed. It's really important to be relaxed, especially on stage, you know, where it's like a lot of people looking at you and it's tendency to not be relaxed and to get nervous and things like that. So it's really important to be relaxed on stage and in life in general. So I do a lot of prayer, honestly. I do just, I pray a lot and I do meditation, but it's more prayer and stretching. You know, like I heard about yoga, but that was already super into Jesus. So I just, um, and I'm like, I, I gotta just be honest. I'm, uh, I'm not your average conventional Jesus person. I really, I love Jesus, like the character, you know, but I don't get super into like, yeah, what do you call it? Judging people. Yeah. So I don't do that part. <laughs> Which I think is a really important part of that story. It's why I'm, the message he was like, please don't judge each other. And I find that a lot of times that happens a lot. So <laughs> anyway, I do anyway. a lot of prayer. I pray to G- I pray a lot. But I heard about yoga, so I was like, cool, I'll pray and, and stretch at the same time. So I've been <laughs> doing that for years. Because <laughs> I know how to stretch from when I was five years old. I stretch a lot. So I try to touch my toes every day and open up my lower back. But yeah, let's see. I mean, being relaxed is the key. You know, to be relaxed in life is really important and to you know, kind of be free. I think that helps on stage. That's what transfers to stage is just peace and calm. But also I just ask God to play through my fingers. Every time I go on stage, I'm like, God, these are your fingers. Do what you want. Make the music how you want. You know, and so I don't know, man. You never know what's going on out there. (laughs) But uh, yeah, I think I really think that, you know, taking a few minutes every day. I find these days right now when I wake up and I pray and I read, I have these little devotions books I read that are like, it's like a little short blurb for each day. And they're really pushing loyalty and they're pushing faith. They're pushing being a good person. So I read that in the morning and I pray a little bit and I find that that just kind of tunes me to the right frequency. So I'm not being all egotistical and 
maniac thinking about myself all day. You know what I mean? You just like these simple policies of like, be kind to people, be honest, be loving, you know, like treat people with respect, you know, like these things are important to kind of think about in the morning to just like get yourself to the right place in your day. You know, like if I do my right little meditation prayer, yoga in the morning, I might end up in a different place. I might, you know, after, cause I just say, give yourself those, that quiet time. My, my parents always call it a quiet time. They're like give yourself some quiet time in the morning and like, don't go rush to turn on your telephone so early and get, get messages from the outside. So quick, give yourself some quiet time and allow that time to just be, because at the end of that time, you might have a whole different frame of what you're going to do with your day and your life right then. So I just, I find those moments to be really powerful and they, they help my life and my musical performing. I love that answer. Thanks. That was a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think is something that's that's often overlooked or misunderstood by up and coming musicians? Uh, style, having your own story and style, you know, because well, it depends. You know, like there's some people that have a lot of style and don't practice enough. I guess, like, I guess it could be me for sure. I need to practice more, but <laughs> I feel like there's certain musicians that just go so deep into the musicality and all the chords and the scales and thing that they. I need you to sing a song that you mean. Like, I need you to, I need to feel an emotion. Like, for me, I'm a huge music fan. Like, for, if I'm going to your concert, I just need to feel like you're feeling it. Like, I just, I don't want you to just be blabbering out crazy scales and things that are quarterly perfect. And that's all cool. And it really helps you express your feelings. But I need people to have feelings. Because <laughs> that's my thing. It's like, don't forget the feeling. Don't forget to feel it. Not somebody else's feeling, but your actual feeling, how you actually feel. <laughs> that part. And individuality, too. Being different, like um, Chief Payne was talking about. So talking about style and, and story and feeling. Yeah. You have this, this awesome positive energy. Lettuce is, is a vibe. But I want to ask you about about negative energy and dark energy and what role that plays in, in music. And as, as a music fan, you know, you, you referenced, you want to have that feeling, but what if that feeling is, is kind of dark? Can you, can you talk to me about the importance of that in art? And yeah, music? totally. Yeah. I think I remember when I was early on, when I got, I was really deep into my practicing as a child with playing bass and practicing constantly. And I, you know, then, things happen where you have emotions, you know? So some, I got super mad, something, I got in a fight with somebody, or something happened, something happened where I got all angry, which doesn't happen to be too much, thank God. But I went to practice like my normal practice, and I noticed it being very much different. <laughs> it really, like, helped a lot. So I really feel like music can transmute and transform negative energy into positive energy so it's a really great place to put your energy i mean you see cats like you know 50 cent and different cats that come from really heavy experiences and put all their energy into music instead of the streets and have it really be a beautiful blessing for them look at jay-z and i mean look at some of these cats and lil wayne that put all his his energy into music and it's just like such a positive energy now i don't know i think probably lil wayne and jay-z were coming with positive energy from that negative place also you know, but I just, I think it, it transmutes, it transforms energy. It can take your, it can take your negative energy and turn it into positive energy. So I think it's a great place to put your, your, um, your energy. It's a great place to get out emotions, you know, and one of my favorite people said, don't let your emotions drag you around, drag your emotions around, you know, just to be just commanding of your emotions, to be at least attempt to command your emotions is a beautiful thing. So, yeah, I think music is a, is a beautiful thing and also controlling your emotions is really important, if, if possible. If possible. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I have a friend that's like, I want to feel every ounce of every emotion and I, I love that too, but I also want to be able to control them and not be taken by the wind by each emotion. I want to be able to see it, feel it, hear it, acknowledge it, but not be, you know, my actions you know, I gotta. You gotta watch your actions when you're emotional and your words. Yes, that that is incredible advice. Thanks. Straight up, straight up. Trying Don't send that do text. It, to do while it. you're pissed. 
Yes, take a walk and take let it go a night, let it go a day. Yes, exactly. That email you're about to send, just wait because when you read that a couple hours from now, you're gonna be like, "Whoa, hold on, let's <laughs> back that down a couple." <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I say that I've learned that hard and easy way, but also the hard way too. Likewise, <laughs> <laughs> as an artist with where you're at now, what does growth and improvement look like for you? You know, uh, let's see. Like staying healthy and continuing to practice to play together and to continue to write songs, you know, writing songs from the heart, you know, writing more, just continuing to write and be honest in the writing and to allow, yeah, just to allow it to grow the way it naturally has been for years. For 30 years, Lettuce has just been organic and really not letting anything sway us. So I think keeping on the path, you know, keeping the original heartbeat of why we do this. And the energy of why we do this is is got to stay the same because we do it for the love. We do it for the way it makes us all feel when we hear it. And we, um, but I think you know keeping that together and then writing from the heart and just continuing to write and play together, and really just continuing to build the trust at, with each other. Just to be continuing to build the friendship of each and the individual friendship and the friendship of the six of us. You know, and to just make that bond as strong as possible which is really strong now. So like keeping it strong and making it stronger, it feels like it's getting stronger day by day. You know, it's crazy. Like I woke up and we had a really nice talk. Me and Nigel and Zoya had a really, really nice talk this morning. And we got, I just feel like we're even better friends than we were yesterday. And I'm the same with Shmeen. We had a really nice hang with him too. It's like, it's like you can know somebody for a really long time and still get to know them, <laughs> you know? So that's some cool stuff. So I think, yeah, that, and I know, expanding musically just we're always allowing ourselves to be whatever we feel in the moment and not get trapped down with like um genre labeling and things like that just to play music together whatever we feel i love your use of the word allow that's a power word for sure word and then for myself i want to do some more singing so i want to do like a solo album and things like that but i want to talk about lettuce today because our album comes out soon and yeah, but I love singing. I've always sang, so I, I want to do more singing. I sang a couple songs with Lettuce at the Jerry Garcia tribute, so that was really fun. Um, sang Cats Under the Stars for that, and uh, that was really fun to do. So it was like kind of taking off on a big wave for my first wave because we were in front of a lot of people, and uh, it felt really good. And uh, every all the singers on stage said I did okay, so I felt really good about that. So I'd love to do more singing personally. Yes, I cannot wait to hear those pipes. So you bring up this album. June 3rd, Unify. June 3rd, Unify. June 3rd. Jesus, talk to, me, talk to me about, uh, for all the Lettuce fans out there listening, how, how come they should be so stoked for this album? Well, it's just really nice to be putting out an album after uh, the turmoils and things, but... I think one of the really great things about the album is uh, we got Bootsy Collins on it and he's doing this song called Keep That Funk Alive, which is just like a beautiful Ooh. thing that happened over the break when Deitch sampled Bootsy on Instagram talking about Keep That Funk Alive. That, Bootsy Collins is an amazing bass player and vocalist and just an amazing superstar person, really nice person. We've gotten to meet him recently and hang with him a bunch. And we did a really cool song with him on this new album. And um, it was during, you know, he was given like kind of an inspirational speech on Instagram saying, we got to keep that funk alive. So Deitch grabbed that and made a song around it. And then Shmeens and I, we all got on it and went crazy. So that song's slamming. And then there's a bunch of crazy uh, hip hop type of things on there. And it was a nice record. It's really nice. And then the cover art's done by Harriet Woodman. It, the heck, cover art really is phenomenal to me. I think she did a really great job on that. Um, this imagery is just kind of giving off a, well, I don't know if I should tell you too much, but they say, be careful with the album cover because, um, space beings might fly out of it. Just so you know, <laughs> you know we've, we've had some, we've had some orb sightings and different things with the album cover so far. So if you put it up on your wall, just know that that might happen. Yeah. Harry, it's a brilliant, 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 um, artist. So. There's that, and then there's just so much good music on it. It's it's really consistent with us, and Nigel's on there singing his butt off and playing his butt off. He's a killing, and um, Nick Daniels sings on it a little bit there too. So 
it's a really cool record and it's got a lot of different styles on it it's got a lot of it's a really well-rounded really well-rounded album i could say i can't wait to hear it june 3rd cool yeah i right, pre-order now there's two songs out now another will be dropping really soon before it comes out and uh I'm so enthralled and, and, and exuberated that everyone's um, expecting it with uh, high hopes and with a lot of, uh, hopefully, give us some grace. It should be good. I think it's really great. If you could open up other musicians' eyes to connecting more deeply with one specific element of music, whether that's space or dynamics, what would you say that would be? i say friendship. Mm. You know? Yeah, well, I, I, let me, I guess I could speak more musically, but to be really good friends is to be a band. Like, Because there's a lot of musicians that play just um, with other musicians sometimes, but making a band is really about friendship, you know? So, yeah, that part. And then, yeah, space. I say play the bass line. Here, here's one thing I've said before, I guess. If a song has a really great bass line, you should definitely play it. Definitely. <laughs> And most songs, most really great songs have a really great bass line that as a bass player, I feel like we should be playing said bass line. And, you know, every once in a while you could do a little bit of something else. But for the most part, there's a bass line to be played. Kind of like if you're a drummer, there's most likely a beat that's going to sound really, really great with that song. And if you play that beat and just play that beat over and over, the song's going to sound really good. And that's, that's kind of my approach to bass. I play the bass line. And if I'm writing, I try to write myself a bass line that's so fun that I don't want to play anything else. You know, so play your part, be humble, and that keep just always practice and make be a good friend. If there's one takeaway or lesson from your story, your journey, what you're all about, what you've gone through, what you've accomplished, what would what would that be? You gotta believe. You really have to see it happening. You gotta believe. You know, and you gotta go hard. You gotta go hard in every area, like. Be well-rounded as a musician and a person, you know, be a writer. If you're a bass player, don't just be a bass player, be a writer, be a string arranger, you know, kind of, and it's not just for music, it's for everything. Whatever you're doing, go as deep as you can with it to what, and and find your strengths and, and rely on your strengths, you know what I mean? You don't have to be everybody. You just need to be you and be as strong as, be as strong a you as you can be, you know, like never give up. There's always another door. There's always another way in. There's always another line that's not as long. Find it. Find yourself. And, like, relax. Everybody cool out. We don't have to figure it out right this second. Uh, Everything's cool. Be a nice person. Be nice to yourself. Be nice uh, to yourself on the inside. <laughs> like, really. Mm. That's about it, I think. Yeah, man. So everything's cool. We're out here in Missouri right now. Come see a lettuce show, you guys. We're out here. On the road, it's a lot less glamorous than it looks like. So come and see us, please, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> Get those tickets. We'll see. See that yeah. lettuce tour. Jesus from lettuce, yeah. wisdom, legends, my man. Thank you so much for being vulnerable. Man, thank with you, the Art, with the interview. Much love, my man. One love. Yeah. Peace to everyone. Thank you so much for um, thinking of us and having me today. I appreciate it. God bless you guys. Absolutely. Unify. June 3rd. Unify. Let's do it. Let's unify. If you got this far, thank you for tuning in. Big shout out to our sponsor, J&J &J Distribution, Ohio's premier CBD and Delta A wholesale supplier. Check out their brands, Death by Gummies, Treetop Gummies, Compassionate Buds, and Cush Burst Gummies. Also, big shout out to our sponsor, SEM Tickets. If you're looking for reasonably priced, reliable ticketing source for your events, check them out. Got SEM Tickets link in our bio. Got J&J &J Distributions link in our bio. Retailers, check out J&J &J Distribution. And yeah, much love, y'all.